together. The Bible says, oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph, oh, Lord, most high. He is awesome. So come on. this morning to come together and lift up the most powerful name of all time and that's the name of Jesus you know this isn't the part of the service where you're a spectator 
This is a participation sport right now. Praise and worship. You just can't stand there. When you just stand there, you really don't get anything out of it. And you're just going through the motions. But when you put something into it, you get something back out. When you go to the bank and you make a deposit, you can get stuff back out. But if you go and you don't do anything, you can't get anything out. It's the same way with God. When you're standing here with praise and worship and you begin to enter in to praise and worship and you begin to shout and you begin to lift up your voice your praise goes up his power comes down you can get something out of it when you start doing that you'll never leave a service where you say I didn't get anything out of that praise and worship I didn't get anything out of that service you know whether you get anything out of it or not is dependent on you not on God so come on I want to encourage you this morning to enter in to praise and worship. When you begin to do that, the heaviness of what you're facing begins to break off because the name of Jesus is more powerful. So come on, let's lift up the most powerful name of all time. There's no other name higher, the Bible says. There's no other name stronger. There's no other name than the mighty name of Jesus that every knee's gonna bow to, every tongue's gonna fess. The name of Jesus, demons tremble. The name of Jesus, they yeah. flee. The name of Jesus, sickness goes away. The name of Jesus, relationships are restored that were never even thought possible to bring back. Your sorrow is turned to joy. The mess of your life is turned to a masterpiece, all because of one single name, and that's the name of Jesus. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Maybe you've never entered into praise and worship. You've never lifted your voice. You've never shouted. You've never clapped. Today is the day to start doing that and moving forward. So let's take that step. There's a reason why in the Bible he says shout. There's a reason why people were in their worst parts, Jonah and the whale, and he told him to, uh, he started to offer up praise and thanksgiving and the whale spit him out. They were stuck around the wall in the battle of Jericho and they shouted and the wall came down. Paul and Silas were in jail, but they began to lift up a praise and worship to their God and all the prison doors were open over and over and over. The Bible tells you that. So why not be a doer of the word this morning? So come on, let's worship him. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ our King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. place this morning. And death could not hold you. 
shout of praise. Jesus, we thank you for your name. We thank you that you've given us authority in your mighty matchless name of Jesus. I thank you for the cross. I thank you that you make a way when there is no way, no matter what we're facing in this life, and nothing can come against you, nothing can defeat you. You are the mighty warrior that wins every single battle. We thank you that you're gonna reign forever, endeavor, endeavor, and that you've called us, that you've chosen us, and that we are your children, and we thank you for it now. We give you all the glory and honor in this place. And everybody said, amen. Well, I'm so glad y'all are here today. Feels good to be in church, doesn't it? So good. So glad y'all are here. Before you're seated, why don't you find a few people around you to wave to and greet them. Show them your big, pretty smile. Hey, good morning, Victory. Man, I am so happy to see you guys. Y'all are looking good. My goodness, look at this full house this morning. Come on, somebody give God praise that Jesus is alive and well. Well, this past week, Friday, Pastor Josh was ministering near State College in Center, Cal in Center County. We had an awesome time. It was an awesome church. He brought a powerful word, and it was just so good to be at this church and be with these people and just to be able to impart to them. It was a great time, and we just really I enjoyed it. I loved everything it. about yeah, that church. It was, it was amazing, awesome. and uh, they had baptisms that mo that evening, and just just an incredible time. I had several people get saved and rededicate their life to Jesus, and just a good night to light a fire, amen? So can y'all give God praise for what he's doing there in Center County and that there's other life-giving churches just like this one. So thank you guys for praying for us while we were away. Uh, you knew that we'd be there Friday night. Also, today's a pretty big day. Today's, today's a big deal. monumental. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a big day. Somebody on this platform turned a little bit older, and I think it is John Weil over here. So make sure you wish. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Minister Weil. We won't tell you his age or anything like that. He's one year from 50. Okay. That, we didn't tell his age. You'll so. spend the next three weeks sorting that out with people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't y'all love him? He did a phenomenal job last week bringing the word. That message on peace was amazing. Very, very cool. Awesome. Don't forget Wednesday nights. This Wednesday, we should be able to have Wednesday night um, church. I think the snow it's has melted, melted off. off. And it has quit raining on the inside of the building. It was pouring. It was like pouring in here. It was crazy. We're glad to finally kind of get that under our belt. And so we can have service here this Wednesday. You don't want to miss it. Miss it. Powerful for all ages and adults are in here. So make and sure you come out. we always believe God for rain to fall in the sanctuary and in yeah, the church. But um, did. we didn't realize that it would literally be raining yeah, inside. It okay. poured. So also I want to say hey to everybody joining us online this morning. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend part of your day and part of your week with us. We're thrilled you're here. Come on, would y'all let them know how important they are to us? We love having you. Do me a favor, take out your smartphone right now and share, share, share the message. You guys are doing a great job. Maddie, how many last week? 100, how many shares? 146. 146. I think yeah. 12,000 people reached. So uh, thank you for doing that. Please keep that up. It really works. And I know it sounds super superficial, but do me a favor, like and follow us on the Facebook page and the Instagram. Here's why. Because you're connected to people that we're not, and they'll just see it in your feed, and they might touch on it, and as a result, it will touch their life. So we want your help to reach our world for Jesus, and we're doing it together. And I just want to give an example of that. Here's somebody, a guy named Mike, that wrote to us from Florida. And he said, you're such a blessing to me. Thank you for being one of God's vessels. I've been repenting of my sins and growing closer to God. How many of y'all know those two things go together? He said, closer and stronger than I've ever felt God before, other than the day he called me to accept his son as my savior, and he blew new life into me. God is speaking to me through your sermons online uh, and just told us how much he loved us and, and keep going after it. So can y'all give God praise for Mike? He's watching there with his family today. And we thank God for those of you who are connecting with us online. If you're visiting this morning, it is such an honor to have you here today. Come on, Victor. Would you let our guests know how much we appreciate them? 
We are truly thankful that you're here with us today. If you could just do me a quick favor, if this is your very first time here, if you could just raise up your hand just so the ushers can see you. They're not going to call you out. They're not going to embarrass you. They're going to make their way towards you, give you a connection card and a pen. If you could take that pen, fill that card out, drop it in the offering plate here in just a moment. We greatly appreciate it. We truly are thankful that you're here. And if you're watching for the first time on Facebook Live, we are so excited to have you as well. If you could just do me a favor and type the word connect in the bar down below and someone's going to reach out to you. Yeah, absolutely. Say hey, thanks for being here this morning. It's an honor and a privilege. We've got a gift for you just to say thanks for being here today and sharing the next few minutes with us. Uh, it's out in the lobby. If you'll take a left when you go out. There's a beautiful cafe, and it'll take you two seconds to grab it before you go. But I just want to say, if you don't have a home church, welcome home. Yeah. And we want to encourage you to connect with us for the next four weeks. How many weeks? Four. The next four weeks. How many weeks? Four. Take what we call the victory test drive. I love hearing from you guys all the time. Say, hey, Pastor Josh, this is our third week. This is our eighth week. This is our 14th month. We've been here three and a half years. I love that people have now added victory anniversaries, Melissa, to their schedule. And that's pretty cool. People saying, hey, we've been a part of the church for this long. Why? Because it's making a difference in hearts and lives. And I was talking to some other friends this morning and said, hey, y'all are making a habit out of this. And they say, it's one we like. So thank you for being here today. We want to help you create some healthy habits in your life that we believe will help you kick off the best week of your life every single Sunday. And so we're thrilled you're here again, wherever you're driving to us from. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for those of you joining us online for the first time. One more time, come on, Victory. Let them know how much, seriously, it's a big deal to us. We know you're going to leave blessed. We never take for granted the opportunity to talk about what God's done for us through generosity. Generosity changes lives. For God so loved the world that he gave. His gift changed our life, and we believe that through our giving, we change the world. You are sitting in a house today that was built by the generosity of the people that are sitting around you. And I want to read to you a passage of Scripture to build your faith before you give today. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, and it's Jesus speaking. Again, we're talking about the letters written in red. And here's what Jesus said. Take heed that you don't do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. We don't give to impress people. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, don't sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory from men. We're not trying to impress anybody. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Watch. But when, somebody say when. Jesus didn't say if. He said, but when you, somebody say that's me. When you do a charitable deed, Jesus assumed that his followers, are there any followers of Christ in the room today? Yes. He assumed that his followers would be generous people. He said, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. He didn't say if you give, he said when you give. And I'm going to tell you real quick a few things that happen when you give. When you give, number one, you are honoring the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He gave it his best to us. Every week, financially, we bring our best back to him as an acknowledgement that he's first. When you give, number two, you're placing a value on what matters most. We're placing a value on the word of God. We're placing a value on the mission and the ministry of the church. The church is the hope of the world. Can I get an amen? amen. When you give, number three, you are a reflection of the heart of God. We are most like God when we are generous. When you give number four, you are building the kingdom of God. We are kingdom builders. Come on, somebody. He went all in on us. He's trusting us to build the kingdom. Jesus isn't here, but we are. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we do the same things he did and greater things than those. And the last thing that happens when you give, somebody say when I give. When I the give. last thing that happens when you give is you are leaving a legacy. And that's what I love because, Bonnie, we can't take it with us, but we can send it ahead of us. Amen, somebody? Come on, can you give God praise that his word works and generosity has the power to improve not only your life, but the lives of those around you. So as you prepare to give today, let's go to the Lord in faith. Father, we come to you right now with many gifts, but one offering. And as we give them today, we ask that you would grow what we sow. We ask that you would bless and multiply it back into the life of every person here. I know that there are no, those here today that have needs in their life, needs that are heavy, needs that are creating anxiety. I release your supernatural peace and that inner confidence today that you are their shepherd and everything's going to be okay. 
I thank you, God, for showing up for them financially in a huge way. And, Father, we just give you praise and glory that we get to do this today. We don't have to. You gave us your best, so we bring this back to you today because we love you. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, be blessed while you give today. Thank you, worship team. Would y'all let them know how much you love them today? All right, all right. Today we're continuing our series, Red Letter Revival. You guys know by now that the words of Jesus Christ are written in red to show us the importance of who's talking. And so we're leaning in to listen to the words of Jesus because the word he speaks to us, they are spirit and they are life. He said, Kalisha, if you abide in my word, you're my disciples indeed. And so again, I want to take a second to just remind you that every single week, every single message, uh, we are starting a conversation from God's Word where we want you to ask four questions, and they are number one, have I heard this? Have I heard this? Number two, do I believe this? Number three, am I living this? And that's really where the rubber meets the road. And number four, can I teach this? You say, Josh, well, I, I, I'm not really, I don't think I'm good at teaching things. And the reality is if you're doing number one, two, and three, you're already teaching it and your influence is expanding because people are watching your life. Amen? And so I want to encourage you to increase your expectation right now. I believe God's going to do something amazing-er because the first part of the service was already amazing. But I believe he's taken us to a greater place right now. And here's how I know God wants to do something special. I had three rounds of diarrhea before service this morning. Some of y'all are like, TMI, Pastor Josh. No, I'm serious. So I'm, I'm ready to receive from God. And again, I'm not coming to just tell you something. I'm here to encounter and experience God with you. Hello, somebody. Amen. Y'all with me today? Some of y'all still can't get over the fact that I just told you I had three rounds of diarrhea. We family, right? That's how much I love you, okay? You're growing at my expense. Hello. <laughs> All right. If you got a Bible, if you can think straight, let's go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Sometimes it takes a minute to land. I'm ready to move on and you're not. <laughs> Three rounds of diarrhea. What does that look like? <laughs> I ate at Moe's last night. John 15, 1 through 8. Here's where we're going to go. Jesus, help us to get out of this situation right now. Lord, we come to hear your word. And Lord, we ask that you prepare our hearts to receive what you want for us. Holy Spirit. We want to grow. We want to be like you. We want to be more like Jesus. So, Lord, reach deep into our hearts today. We don't want to just hear something. We want something we can take out of here, apply to our lives that will make us better and help us make the world a better place, that will shine your light and bring freedom to those who are in bondage. We thank you for the great things you're going to do. And I just believe right now, God, that there's people here right now that have not yet met your son as their savior. Maybe they have a different idea of what you're all about. But today, I thank you that they're going to taste how good you are. They're going to know your love firsthand. And I thank you that their hearts are going to open up and they're going to receive something amazing that they never could have imagined. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, come on, would you give him praise on credit for the next couple minutes together? Here we go. John chapter 15, verse 8. This is one of my favorite passages. I read it every single week just about without fail. Here's what Jesus said. He said, I am the true vine 
and my father is the vine dresser. So we have a picture of a vineyard. Jesus said, I am the vine. I am the main branch. I am the trunk of the tree, if you will. I'm the vine, and my father is the vine dresser. He's the one that cares for the vineyard. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. The literal translation there is he lifts up. He helps it. And every branch that bears fruit, everybody say fruit. He said bears fruit. He didn't say every branch that will be a fruit. He said every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. What does he do to those branches? He prunes them. Here's why. That it may bear what? More fruit. So we see there fruit and then more fruit. And verse 3 says, you are already clean or you are already pruned because of the word which I have spoken to you. The word of God prunes our life. It cuts off what sucks away life but produces no fruit. Can I get an amen today? Here's what he says in verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. Live in me and I'll live in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. It's talking about the power of connection. That true life flows from the true vine. I'm going to say it again. True life flows from the true vine, Colin. He said, if you cut a branch off, it won't bear any fruit. It's the same in our life. When we are separated from Christ, we cannot produce the fruit that God desires in our lives. He says in verse 5, I am the vine and you are the branches. Let me ask you a question. Who is the vine? Come on. Who's the vine? Jesus. Who's the branches? Come on. Say, I am. Say, I am. Yeah, Jesus is the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, watch this, bears what? Much fruit. So then we see that he went from fruit to more fruit to much fruit. Again, we talked earlier this year about what can I expect my future to look like, regardless of what's going on in the world around me. Here's the answer. Fruit, more fruit, much fruit. There is a trajectory of prosperity in your life. God created you to grow. He said, he said, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Well, is there anybody abiding in Jesus today? Amen? Then the Bible says you bear much fruit. It's a promise. It's a guarantee. Every single week I make that declaration. I declare we bear much fruit. I declare over this church. I declare over your lives. We bear much fruit. Watch this. For without me, you can do what? What can you accomplish in life that's worthwhile without Jesus? Nothing. But I want you to think about it in reverse. We're not without him, are we? That means we can accomplish, Frank, the impossible. The fruit God desires from our life is the ability to accomplish the impossible. God wants you to accomplish things you could not have done without him. Things that other people have said over you were impossible. They said, you can't do that. You can't be that. You'll never amount to anything. You'll never go anywhere. And God says, that's a lie from the devil. I'm your father. You get your identity from me, not even from your father here on earth. And he's got it. He's asking us, which one do you want to prevail in your life? You can declare over yourself, in him I bear much fruit and I can accomplish the impossible. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Come on, somebody. There's hope in that verse. There's faith building in that verse. There's victory in that verse. And he says in verse 6, If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. Can I tell you today, heaven is real and so is hell. I know it's not politically correct, but we're going to keep preaching it. And they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Fruitfulness means seeing your prayers answered. God is not ignoring your intercession. He wants to answer your prayers. But watch this, verse 8. By this, my Father is glorified. Here's why. That you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. That fruit is an indicator of what kind of branch you're connected to. Jesus said you'll know people by their fruit. He said a good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. If I see apples hanging from a branch, Summer, what kind of tree am I looking at? I'm looking at an apple tree. If I see peaches hanging off of a branch, what kind of a tree am I looking at? A peach tree. If I see watermelons hanging from the top of a tree, what kind of tree am I looking at? Something from Alice in Wonderland, because they don't grow that way. 
And I don't want to be around when they're ripe. <laughs> Granddad Payne would always say, Brother, you want to come over? We're about to bust a cold melon. Get that watermelon out. But, but here's the thing. The tree, its fruit reveals what kind of tree it is. The fruit our lives produce should reveal that we are connected to Jesus Christ. If Jesus is the vine and I'm connected to him, then I should be producing Christ fruit. If I'm connected to Jesus, then I should be producing Jesus fruit. So that, Miss Ruth, when people look at me and they see Jesus fruit, then they know that he's the one I'm connected to. Amen? And here's the thing about fruit trees. No tree eats its own fruit. The fruit is always there for somebody else to be blessed. God has saved you. And he is doing an amazing work in you. But it's not just for you. It's so that other people around you can look at you and get to know him. Come on, somebody. God wants and needs you to grow. Somebody else's destiny depends on your maturity. And here's how you know when a plant is mature. We say a plant is mature when it is able to reproduce. Here's where I need to get you, Christian. Here's where I need to get you, church in the United States of America. It's not all about gimme, gimme, gimme. It's not all about me, me, me. I know we want to hear things that make us feel good about us, but at some point, we got to get over us and get ourselves under control and get our eyes onto the lost and get our eyes onto the world and run into the darkness with the light of Jesus Christ and share with them what God has already shared with us. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. I can't just hear it, but I got to believe it. I can't just believe it, but I got to live it. I can't just live it, but I got to be able to share it with somebody else. When you do that, then you know you're mature. That's what God is looking for. Us. So this morning, my point to you is simply this ready, set, grow. That's what God wants us to do. Come on, somebody, if you're ready to grow, let's give God praise. So let me get you get you some growth principles this morning that are gonna help you. And I want to keep this conversation going for the next week. But the first one is simply this: growth is not determined by your environment. Growth is not determined by your environment. Where you are, who you're with, what's going on in your life right now, the nation you live in, the economy, your, whatever it is on the external, your growth in God is not based on the external. It's based on the internal. Because what I'm connected to has not changed. I don't need my environment to cause me to experience increase. My increase comes from the inside out, not from the outside in. Remember, we're living in an upside down paradigm as children of the kingdom of God. We don't do things the way the world does it. The world says if you have this, if you get this, if you drink this, if you buy this, if you live this way, if you wear this kind of clothes, everything is external because the devil is saying just get this, reach for this, grab this carrot and then you'll be happy. And God says, I am everything you need and I complete you from the inside out. So then my job is to grow into the man and the woman of God that he's called me to be or you to be. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking about being transgender right now. I'm not man and woman. I'm a man and, and I'm not a woman. Hello, somebody. <laughs> All right. But here's the thing. There is an oak tree inside of every acorn. The omnipotent God of the universe is already living inside of you. There is an oak tree inside of your acorn. Come on, tell your neighbor right now, there's an oak in your acorn. Some of y'all are like, I don't know what he's talking about. Diarrhea, oaks, and acorns. Where am I today? Welcome to church. <laughs> Growth is not determined by your environment. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 2, watch this. It's talking about Jesus. For he, Jesus, shall grow up. Somebody say grow up. Y'all know there's a difference between growing up and showing up. A lot of people go to church and they show up, but they ain't growing up. For he shall grow up before him, before God the Father, as a tender plant. And as a root, as a root out of dry ground. Jesus grew in an environment where he should not have been able to grow. He faced tremendous opposition that came against him. Even his own family at one point as he was growing up and as he stepped into ministry, his mother and his brothers and sisters said, he's crazy. Right? Go get him. He's crazy. 
He grew up in an environment where he faced tremendous opposition, and yet he continued to grow. He continued to thrive. I thank God that in 16 years, this church has grown and thrived against all odds. Amen? It's, the, it's proofs in the pudding that unless the Lord help builds the house, we labor in vain. This ain't the work of a man. This is the work of God. That's why you can't stop it. You shouldn't resist it because God has a dream to reach this region with his love and with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're here to help as many people as we can get to heaven. We're here to let people know God is for you and he's not against you. And you don't have to be against anybody or angry with anybody to be for Jesus. Come on, somebody. If you got a soul, we're on your side. And we love you today. And God loves you too. And there's a seat for you if you want it in this house but your environment does not determine your growth factor my growth is not based on where I am it's based on who I am and whose I am your circumstances do not have to be perfect in order for you to grow and I, I meet people and I just I talk to them and I can hear this discouragement because they begin to share I, I, I'm, I'm being held back because of where I am and who I'm with and what's going on in my life and to be honest with you as your pastor I I just want to lovingly tell you I hear one excuse after another. I can't, I can't, I can't. There's a million reasons why we all can't. There's a million reasons why we all shouldn't. There's a million reasons why we all couldn't. But there's only one reason you need today to move a mountain, slay a giant, and accomplish the impossible. And that is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross to win victory in your life. And your job is to walk in that victory every single day and let him do the heavy lifting. The devil's defeated. He's under your feet. You're not under his. Come on. You're not under the situation. You're seated in the heavenly place over the situation get back up on top where you belong but growth is a choice we make regardless of the environment you're in maybe you're married to somebody you feel like the atmosphere is suffocating let's just let's just talk about it you feel like you live in a house where you can't even breathe it's so oppressive. You walk on eggshells all the time. You feel like, how am I going to be my best when this person brings out the worst in me constantly? Maybe it's somebody you work with. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's your crazy cousin or sister-in-law. I don't know. You fill in the blank today. But the reality is, I watch one person after another come in this church like that. And it's not a matter of weeks before I'm watching you rise up. And like we sang today, I hear the chains falling. I hear chains falling this morning because God needs us to grow. Come Come on, church. He needs the world to see how great he is. And they're only going to see that by looking at you. We got to bear the fruit of Jesus Christ. We got to bear the fruit of accomplishing the impossible. And it's able to be done because we're connected to the vine. I can't control what happens around me. But I can control what's happening in me. How many of you know it doesn't matter what you're going through? It doesn't matter what's coming against you today. When you have Christ in your heart, when you're connected to him, you got everything you need. But start living from the inside out, not the outside in. The Bible says, Becky, that you are born again. How many of y'all are born again today? Amen. If you can't say it in here, you won't say it out there. Are you born again today? Come on, let me hear you because the world needs to. Are you born again today? Okay. He said you are born again by the incorruptible seed of God's word. The incorruptible seed. Here's what I love about that. No matter how much dirt the devil throws on top of you. The seed is incorruptible. He can't corrupt the seed. And the seed will not fail. Come on, somebody. He said in Isaiah 55, he said, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall accomplish, Mark, that which I please, and it shall prosper, it shall prosper, it shall prosper, it shall grow, Tom, it shall flourish, it shall thrive in the people and in the places whereunto I send it. We are here to spread the word. We are here to preach the word. We are here to share the word. The word is the only thing that will change people's hearts and lives. We don't change the word. The word changes us. I don't care what the world says I don't care what the world does we're here to follow Jesus we're here to build by a better blueprint come on somebody and it doesn't make us better than them it makes us better than we were without it amen yeah. number two growth must be prioritized somebody say prioritized you got to prioritize your growth the reality is you're here for a reason but you're also only here for a season we have a limited amount of time so we have to make a decision 
where am I going to focus, Kurt? What do I want to grow in? What, what are the areas of my life that matter most, not only to me, but matter most in light of eternity? And then spend the majority of our life, our time, our talent, our treasure, Brother Matthew, investing into those areas so that we can see growth in those things. And I want to show you what it says about Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Jesus is a little boy. He's growing up. And here's one of the things we see about him, that Jesus grew. Somebody say Jesus grew. Even Jesus grew. Think about that. Jesus himself grew. Well, he's the example for us, Rose. He shows us the life God's called us to live. Even Jesus grew. And Aaron, these are the areas Jesus grew in. He grew in wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. He grew in stature. In other words, physical size. He grew in favor with God and with all the people. And so it shows us four areas that God has called each and every one of us here to grow. He's called us to grow, number one, it says wisdom. He's called us to grow mentally. God is the most incredible computer on the face of the planet is between your ears. Do you know we're not even scratching the surface, Matt? on what the human mind is capable of, of doing. We run on so little brain power. Some of you wives are like, yeah, my husband runs on even less. <laughs> God has called us to grow. We should develop our minds. We should learn everything we can. If you're in school right now, all you, all you students, listen up real close. Take your studies seriously. God wants you to grow in your knowledge about the world around you. It's important. But it says he grew in wisdom. And here's what that tells us. Growing old is not the same as growing up. Wisdom is different than knowledge. Wisdom is knowledge applied. You're getting information because one day you need to use it. Today I'm sharing something with you, not because we're a book club. But because there's something you need to use this week. Wisdom is knowledge applied. It's the ability to take a concept and make application of that concept. Even Jesus had to learn how to do that. And then watch that concept bear fruit and produce increase in your life. The second area Jesus grew was not only mental growth, but then physical growth. Everybody say physical growth. I got this physical growth thing down. Four months ago, I wore this shirt buttoned. Fat Josh done caught me. I got to go back to the treadmill this week. But physical growth. We need to take care of our body. Healing is great. God is a healer. By his stripes we're healed. But walking in health is even better. Take care of your body. Your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then we see spiritual growth. Jesus grew spiritually. It says he grew with God. You say, Josh, how did he grow with God? Here's how. Here's one of the indicators. This passage is written when, if you remember, Jesus and, and his whole family went to the temple. And they had gone there for the feast. And the, the whole family leaves. And they're a couple days down the road. And all of a sudden, Mary's looking around. She looks in the back seat. Jesus not in his booster seat. Right? He's not riding the booster on the back of the camel. She's like, Joseph, stop the bus. Jesus isn't here. And I'd love to hear that, how that conversation went with God that night. My son is where? Oh, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> so they go back to the last place where they were. They go back to the temple and they find Jesus. And they said, what, what are you doing? Why are you here? And he said to them, did you not know? I needed to be in my father's house. And I needed to be in my father's, in my, about my father's business. I want to tell you right now, there is a way to build a church that young people run to and not from. But we got to make it attractive to them and create a space for them and give them an opportunity. Come on, somebody. If your kids run away, let them run to the house of God. But here's the thing, B-Rad. Jesus took time. He grew with God because he made the house of God a priority. He made the word of God a priority. He made God appointed and anointed leaders a priority and he sat at their feet and he listened to them and he learned from them and then he went out and lived it. And that's how we grow with God. And then the third, the fourth area of growth that this shows us is, is social growth. Everybody say social. Social growth. The Bible says he grew in favor with God but then he also grew in favor with man. Chris, let me, let me break this down for y'all. Some people think that if you're really close to God, you should be really far from people. There's nothing that could be farther from the truth. Like seriously, some of the most anointed people I've ever met are some of the most miserable. I'm like, I don't want, if that's what the anointing is, I don't want it. 
But here's what I see about Jesus. I see Jesus was the most anointed human to ever walk the face of the planet. And people ran to him, not from him. Hello? You can have favor with God and man. Victory Church has favor with God and favor with man. How are you going to reach people if they don't want nothing to do with you? Come on, somebody. You can have favor with both. You should be growing in your sphere of influence. Everywhere you go, every single day, where you live, work, and play. What did Jesus say? He said, I want you to do this with me. We have a commission that we're going to share. It's the great co-mission. And it's to reach the world with the gospel. He said, I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, Rachel. Well, God has not called you to reach the entire world. And I meet some people who try to do it, and they're killing themselves. But God has called you to reach your world. And your world is your sphere of influence. It's the people you know. It's the people you're connected to. It's the people who will reach for you and they'll receive Christ's fruit from your life that will allow them to taste and see that the Lord is good because of what you're carrying and it's producing from the inside out. Come on, somebody. Can you give God praise? <laughs> Number three, growth comes from transformation, not from information. This is so important. Our culture has fallen in love with mass amounts of information. We're living in the greatest information age of human history. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 that in the last days there would be an explosion of travel and information. I can't remember what the stat was, Jake, but uh, it seems to me that it's close to the amount of knowledge and the amount of information online doubles in the world like every single week. It's absolutely mind-numbing how much it's multiplying right now. And if we're not careful, and if we're always looking for something new, how will we ever be able to digest and process what God has given us? we got to be careful, church, that it's not info, 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 info. Show me something new. Show me something new. There is nothing new under the sun. You don't read the Bible once and set it on a shelf. You read it and you read it and you read it and you read it and you read it because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And the more you hear it, the more your faith grows. And the more you hear it, the more your faith grows. And the more your faith grows, the more your mountains move. And the more your faith grows, the greater the giants you slay. And the more your faith grows, the greater you see God showing up in your life. Come on, somebody. This is the real deal. We want to see God showing up in our lives, in our communities, in this generation. Here's why. Because we have a mission and a mandate that has has not changed. Victory Church exists to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and we can't do it with the, without the power of the Holy Spirit. Every dollar we spend, everything we do, every song we sing is all about reaching people with the love of Jesus and you are a part of that mission. Come on. Amen. But most Christians are educated beyond their own obedience. We're always receiving but not acting. And we become connoisseurs of the word. Well, I like this pre preacher better than that one. I don't care what they sound like. What are they saying? What, what do you have that I need? Every stream has something to offer. You just got, you got to know the difference. That's part of growing spiritually. You, got to, you can't be like a baby bird. Eyes shut, mouth open. You got to know what to eat and what not to eat. Come on, somebody. Listen to the Holy Spirit. If he checks you, if you got a flag on the inside, I, I don't know about that. It just doesn't seem right to me. It don't feel right. Preacher's talking about diarrhea three times before church. That just don't seem right to me. Listen to that. Amen? I tell you, don't take me at my word. Take God at his. Take what I give you and go home and look it up for yourself. James 1.22. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourself. If you listen and you don't obey, you're deceived. Let me try that again on this side of the room. If you listen and you don't obey, you're deceived. Right? You can't talk your way into heaven. But you can walk your way into heaven. That's why Jesus said, follow me. He didn't just say, talk to me. He said, follow me. Are there any followers of Jesus in the house today? Come on, somebody. Maturity is more than knowing what to do. It's doing it. Come on, tell your neighbor, just do it. It's more than knowing what to do. It's doing it. We receive information that then becomes application. Information becomes application. Information, I receive something I didn't know. And then I apply it to my life. And as I step out and I start living at Angie, 
then I experience transformation. We experience God as we live what we learn. True transformation happens as I step into obedience. Obedience is a declaration of lordship. When he's lord, it means he's master. And if I'm your master, then you obey me. That's why I do everything Marsha tells me to. <laughs> totally kidding. She's like, you are a liar. You're going to hell. <laughs> Information becomes application. But when I step into application, I experience transformation. It's in the middle as I apply it, as I live what I learn, day by day, step by step, one act of obedience after another, that I, I gradually get to know who God is. You don't know God because you read the Word. You don't know God just because you read it. You really get to know Him and see Him and hear Him and experience Him as you start doing it like He did it. Jesus said, do it like this. Growth is the key to remaining fresh. It's the key to remaining necessary. It's the key to remaining relevant. It's the key to remaining current. It's the key to increasing your value in everything you're connected to and everything you're a part of. Growth is what extends your shelf life. How many of y'all have milk in the refrigerator at home? Just wave at me. There ought to be a stamp on it that, that is an expiration date. Growth is how you never expire. Growth is how you keep extending your shelf life. When you stop growing, you become stale. You become stagnant. And all of a sudden, you start losing your value because you're not keeping up. You're not offering fruit. There is nothing there that is improving the lives of those around you. And that's just the reality of it. We can't get stuck in a rut and keep doing things the way we always did 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago. People who grow, companies that grow, families that grow, churches that grow are the ones who have the ability to continue growing and outgrow the rate of change in the world around them so that they can stay ahead of the curve and meet the need. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show you what's coming down the road. He's going to show you the areas you need to grow now to get you ready to step into the moment God's prepared for you in the future. Come on somebody. God created you with a destiny and it's your job to become the person he called you to be between now and the moment you feel like he opens a door and you step into that place of greatness. That's exactly what he did in the life of Joseph. Growing old does not mean you grow obsolete. Growing old doesn't make you unnecessary. L listen to me, those of you who are getting older and, 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 and you know, how do I say this? Uh, you're, you're maturing. <laughs> Sounds dignified, doesn't it? Some of y'all know getting old, there ain't nothing dignified about it. <laughs> It can be difficult. But I want, I want you to hear what I have to say right now. The Bible says, though your outward man is perishing, your inward man, your spirit man is being renewed. And it's growing stronger day by day by day. You cannot gauge your value off of your body. You cannot gauge your purpose off of your body. You cannot gauge your impartation and your impact off of your, off of your body. you got to know today that no matter what's happening on the outside, on the inside, you are fresh and you are growing and you are thriving. And the Spirit of God is renewing you and regenerating you. And you have something to offer. And if there's breath in your lungs there is a reason and there is a purpose why you're on this planet and you cannot give up you cannot surrender you cannot say well I'm done and just sit me on a shelf no you need to be right smack in the middle of the mix showing other young people how to do what God's called us to do because you know what you've been around for a minute you've heard it you believed it and you lived it and you got a little track record now with you that you can come up and show them the same God who delivered me from the lion and the same God who slaughtered the bear is the same God that's going to show us how to take this giant down so yeah. watch me as I work and other people will watch you as you follow Christ and what you create is faith prints for them to then step into behind you follow me as I follow Jesus if you follow me baby I'll get you to heaven if you follow me baby I'll get you into the presence if you follow me baby I'll get you into prosperity yeah. I need some people with that kind of maturity and that kind of attitude to say do it like me and embrace the response Responsibility of growing up. Hallelujah. When that happens, I'm not just trendy, I'm a trendsetter. Amen. I was talking to my nana. 
you know Nana. Nana and Granddad, Jimmy and Joyce Williams. That's her right there. Granddad went home to be with Jesus about three years ago. And uh, she called me a couple weeks ago. And I could tell by the sound of her voice that she had been praying. And she said, I've been praying for your service tomorrow. And I just want you to know God's going to do something amazing. And she just began to breathe life into me. And she began to speak into me. And she began to encourage me. And this is somebody that I've watched my entire life bear fruit regardless of the season they lived in. And here's what she said to me that rocked my world. She said, Josh, we're never too old to bend our knees and say, Lord, start a new work in me. She's 83 years old. She said, Josh, we're never too old to say, God, do a fresh work in my life. We're never too old to say, Jesus, use me. And here's what she said next. She, she said, people think, well, what does sin look like at 83 years old? And she said, what, what can an 83-year-old woman possibly be doing to sin? Well, she lives in Nashville, so she's bar hopping. <laughs> Just kidding, Nana. She said, here's what sin looks like for me. It looks like apathy. I don't want to read my Bible when I get up. I don't want to go to church. My body hurts and I don't feel like witnessing or worshiping. I don't feel like serving anymore. And she said, Josh, there's always work to be done. There's always something you can do. And I want that heart and that spirit to permeate the life of every single person in this place today. That the cry of our heart would be, God, do a fresh work in me. God, I, I, I've become stale in some of the areas of my life. Forgive me. God, do a fresh work in me. God, do something new in my life. God, forgive me for not being current with you in my prayer life. Forgive me for, for not taking time for your word when you took the time to write it to me. God, forgive me for not embracing the importance of serving my community. God, do a fresh work in me. Would y'all stand with me this morning? How many of you could be honest with every head bowed and every eye closed? You say, Josh, today I want God to do a fresh work in my life. Just raise your hands. I want God to do a fresh work in my life. I want to be fresh in my relationship with God. I want to grow. I want there to be a flourish. I want to prosper. I want to be fruitful. I want to experience increase. When I meet Jesus, I don't want to miss out on anything he had for me. I want everything God's got for me. If that's you, just raise both hands. The lifting of both hands is a sign of surrender. And Father, we do that right now. We surrender to you totally and completely. We surrender our mind to you. Somebody here today has been disturbed all week about situations and, and about details and about the things they're dealing with in their life. God, we surrender all that to you right now. We surrender our soul to you, our, our, our emotions, God, our willpower. We want to do it your way. We surrender to you, so Holy Spirit, guide us. Help us to make better choices. Our spirit is yours, God. We declare your lordship on our lives. So as we lift our hands to you and not only surrender, but God, a prophetic sign as a funnel, God, we ask that as we offer our life up to you as a living sacrifice on the altar today, we invite your Holy Spirit to come down and pour into us and flow through us, God, and heal us from the inside out and help us to bring healing to the world around us. Love us, God, beyond the areas where we don't love ourselves. And I pray that you help us to share that love with those around us. We thank you, God, that we receive receive right now your acceptance and your identity and we walk in that strength and we will bear that fruit of Jesus Christ so the world can taste and see that you're good. God, do something amazing through us right now. We receive a fresh infilling and a fresh touch of your Holy Spirit. Increase our wisdom. Increase the anointing. Make us more effective. Increase our opportunities. Help us to keep knocking on doors till they open. And Father, we declare your favor. Increase your favor as we grow with you and with those around us. I thank you now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we want our growth to be the result of gratitude for your gift. You gave us a great gift. And Lord, we are so grateful for it in Jesus. And we thank you now 
for doing great things through our life. And the world will never be the same in Jesus' name. Because we're better and the lives of those around us are going to get better too. In Jesus' name we ask it and everybody said, come on, can you give God a big praise today? Minister Wow, would you come? Oh, praise God. We don't ever want you to leave this place without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. He's the vine and we're the branches. But are you plugged into that vine today? Do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Do you know him as Lord and Savior? Do you know him so well that if today your life were required of you, do you know that you know that you know that you would spend eternity in his presence? Because you can. You can know that today. And with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, if that's you and you've never begun a new relationship with Jesus Christ, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to slip up your hand. Not because I want to point you out. I just want to know who I'm praying with today. Or maybe you've been away from him and you say, you know what? I got to plug back in today. I got to plug back into that vine. I got to come back to Jesus today. In a moment, that's you too to slip up your hand and at home. If that's you, I want you to type in that precious name of Jesus. When we see that name hit the screen, you're telling us, John, I'm coming back to Jesus. Or, John, I'm beginning a new life with Jesus Christ. And on the count of three here in the room, if that's you, slip up your hand. One, two, three. Go ahead and slip up your hand where I can see it. Online, type in that name of Jesus. Just wave at me where I can see it. All heads bowed today. I need Jesus. I need to come back to Jesus today. Hallelujah. Just wave at me where I can see it. I see you there in the back. Glory to God. This is your time. This is your moment right now. So that's me. I'm coming to Jesus. I'm coming to Jesus with everything I've got right now. I'm coming to Jesus. If that's you, just slip up a hand and wave at me. Online, type in that name. Five, four, three, two, and one. Come on, church. Let's celebrate that today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not a priest. You don't need me to get to God. I just want to lead you in a prayer today, and I want to ask everyone in the room if you would do me the honor of praying together as a family with us. And at home, I want you to pray along too. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord Jesus, Come into my life. Wash me clean of my sin and make me brand new. I believe in you. I believe you died for me. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Now take my life and do something great with it. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen, hallelujah. If you made that decision today, we're so excited. I'm excited because we now share something in common. This is my birthday. This is your new birthday. So now we're going to share that date for the rest of our lives together. I'm excited with you. If you need prayer in your life, we want to pray with you. Come on down front after service. And like we always do, we're going to leave this place with a shout. This is hallelujah on three. Here we go. One, two, three. Hey, we will see you on Wednesday night.